Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, she's the number 20 recruit in the nation uh, for our class of 2021. Um, she is a junior Pan Pax three time silver medalist, four times silver, silver medalist, if you include the pool and open water, two times bronze medalist. She's the Pan Am silver medalist in the 800 free. Mariah Denigan, how's it going? Good. I'm doing great. How are you? You are a distance champ. Uh, Were you always a distance swimmer? Um, I was not always a distance swimmer. I, my first like sectional cut was in actually in the hundred backstroke. Um, I was a hundred backstroke when I was little. Uh, I always did excel in like the 200 free and 200 IM, which was like the distance of nine, 10 year olds. <laughs> but um, as soon as I swam my first 500 freestyle, I knew that it was going to be a distance. I was going to be a distance swimmer. Now, was that more of a thing where you just did really well and you were like, well, this is my fate? Or did you swim the 500 free and you were like, that's really fun. I want to do that. Um, I swam the 500 free and I was like, oh, I love going fast like this. Um, so I knew from the start that I would love to do distance swimming. <clears throat> so what what in particular, in, in particular did you like about going fast like that in the 500? I like um, being able to pace myself and um, I was never like sprinting was always struggling for me. I could never find that uh, initial speed and um, I was always got better as the race went on. So I, that's one thing that I love about distance swimming is that you don't have to be fast at the beginning of the race. Cause it's always what, how it ends, like how fast you're going at the end of the race. So, Yeah. And to, to, to take that one step further, as I mentioned, you are a junior pan pack, uh, silver medalist in the mixed team, open water relay, the bronze medalist in the five K. Um, I like 18 and unders, especially who, who are, it's already such an elite level in open water just amaze me. I mean, that's so far to go. At, at a fairly young age, um, what, what was your first open water experience like? Um, my first open water experience was when I was nine or no, 10, sorry. Uh, our, my old club team uh, had open water. We wanted to go to open water states. or um, So we had a, our first practice and we had to swim like out to this buoy and back. And I kid you not, I had to get pulled out uh, by the um, jet ski because I thought a fish bit me, but really it was just a cramp. So yeah, I, um, I was panicking, thought that a fish bit me. I sat on the dock, started eating some food, and then finally I got back in and I loved it. Um, after my first race, I knew I wanted to uh, continue doing open water because I love the feeling of um, being able to race in something that's not a pool. So it's fun. And, and you were 10. Yes. Yeah. I was 10 years old, man. That's that again, that's astounding to me that, uh, I mean, I personally, I hate open water. It's terrifying to me because I can't (laughs) see the bottom of the pool. I can't see the black line. I think fish, I think a fish is going to bite me. (laughs) <laughs> to, if we're being completely honest, yeah. um, but you, but you fell in love with it. You've you loved racing in something other than, other than something other than a pool. Yeah. And, uh, and so, um, was, was 2018 your first international open water experience? Yes. Yes. 2013, uh, 2018 was my first international experience all across, like off on every board, um, pool swimming and open water swimming. Had you ever left the country before that period? I think I left once before that just for a cruise to the Bahamas. 
And that's it. I have never, um, I had never gotten to represent USA before 2018. Okay. And dude, what a, what a prime time to represent USA, to get to go to Fiji for the 2018 Junior Pan Pacific Championships. Uh, I, I have, I've talked to several people who were on that trip. I've talked to no one who did open water in Fiji. So I'm stoked to hear about that. Tell me about, um, your 2018 Junior Pan Pack experience. Um, actually open water, uh, junior, uh, worlds were in Israel. So I went to Fiji okay. and then, um, a month later in September of 2018, I went to Israel to, um, do, uh, the open water junior worlds. So is, uh, going to Fiji was amazing. Like in literally there's no words to describe how awesome it was, um, the pool was amazing. Um, the team culture of Team USA, there's no culture like it. Uh, there, Everyone was building each other up. The cheering section was amazing. And then on the other hand, on like open water spectrum, it's a more intimate group. So um, there's only 12 of us on the open water uh, roster for Team USA. And um even though it was smaller, the culture was exactly the same. And a lot of those kids that I went to Israel with are like my best friends on like the national junior team. So um, it was because there was like that smaller environment, you could get closer with the group of people that you were in uh, and open water. Like there's also another level of bonding to distance swimming and open water swimming because of how hard and how typically most people do not like it. <laughs> I, w- I was going to ask about that because I was, you know, like really what's it like to be around a, gr- a group of people who are just, who, who love distance swimming so much yeah. and at the same level? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I always think that distance swimming, um, like groups, distance groups bond the most because we are put through that extreme amount of yardage on the daily base basis. So th- going through that kind of training, uh, don't get me wrong, like sprinting training and middle distance training is all very hard, but distance swimming is a lot of, um, uh, monotonous, like going down, doing eight, four hundreds or anything like that. So, um, it just, you just go through another level of bonding while, um, training. Yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, Tell me about your experience racing uh, in Israel at those open water championships. Um, it was amazing. Uh, so we raced in the red sea. So it was like really cool. Like it was, uh, super clear. The water you could see at least 10 to 12 feet down. You could see the bottom for the most part. And um, you could also see the fish that were swimming around you, which is uh, a little, it can get a little scary at some points, but you you learn to mind your own business and the fish will mind theirs <laughs> too. <laughs> but um, the water was clear. Now um, the, the course was set up to where it was like, 50 meters uh wide but 750 meters long so um while i was racing i did so i did i ended up meddling um i got third so i bronze meddled and um but the problem was i went at least a thousand i would say at least 800 meters off course because it was so narrow I lost sight of what I was supposed to be sighting because I couldn't see the buoy and I led the whole entire lead pack off course. And the, um, the two people that beat me were the ones that did not follow the main pack. So they were in last and then they ended up getting first because they did not go off course. Yeah. So I, I realized it when I looked over and I was like, I can't find any of the buoys. I looked to my right 90 degrees and the buoy was over there. So I had to sprint. I take off sprinting. I sprint the last two laps and I ended up passing. There was a girl in front of me. So there was three people in front of me and I ended up passing the one at the, like with maybe 10 meters left to finish. So, and ended up getting the bronze medal. So 
Yeah. And it, you, you seem to have such a positive outlook about this. Yeah. Yeah. And the moment I was like really mad, but I learned like, right after maybe 20 minutes after I was like in a good mood about it like laughing about it with Erica and Kenzie and everyone and honestly I just took it as a learning experience um to get like I was only sighting off of the buoy so I found uh so now in like future races I know to sight off the buildings that like the buoys are aligned with so it was just a learning experience and then Uh, We were the first race, so I was able to tell Erica and Kenzie, the girl swimming the 10K after me, that, uh, hey, the course is really narrow, so make sure that you're sighting off of the buildings and not the buoys. So I just took it as a learning experience, and um, it was – it's funny now. (laughs) And so then what was an open water relay? I think this is awesome that they have it. I think it sounds super intense, but also really cool. Tell me about the experience of of being a part of an open water relay. It was amazing. Um, So it was a mixed relay. Uh, We, uh, so it was me and um, Claire Pofel, or no, sorry, sorry. Take that back. It's me and um, Chase Travis were the girls. And then um, Jackson Carlisle and Connor Hunt were the boys. And it was amazing to see. So Chase led off. It was amazing to see how she was keeping up with all those boys that led off. And it was, it was, it was like exhilarating watching because it got me fired up for, I was the third leg. So I watched, um, I watched uh, Connor and Chase both go. And I think when Connor came in, we were in second And so I just started, I took off and I started chasing down the guy that was in front of me and I got as close as I could, but we still ended up getting a second, but it was still so fun. And, um, it was like, so each swimmer swam a mile, which it seems like a lot to a regular swimmer, but in open water swimming, it went by super fast. Like I, I, I've never felt a mile go by faster, honestly. So could you see each swimmer the whole way they were swimming? Um, yes. Yeah. The course was like, I, it was a little, they were a little far away uh, when they got to the like other end of the course, but mm-hmm. you could still see like um, the lead pack. And it, I mean, it was a lot of white water, but you could see the lead pack. Fine. Nice. So that, that does seem pretty exciting. Do you like about how long did that take? Uh, it took about, I would say, so 16 to seven minutes per leg. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's a, yeah, a, a totally different, <laughs> puts the 800 free relay to shame. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> Um, so speaking of, we talked about distance training earlier. So in your younger years, you know, you you had your first open water experience at 10, um, following that experience, tell me about what, uh, what your training has been like since, since then. Uh, a lot of my training has just been a lot of freestyle training, but also I love training. I am, and that's one of like four. I am is my, one of my favorite events uh, to swim as well, because I love that, uh, balance between freestyle and I am training for me. I can't train all freestyle, um, all seven days of the week. Uh, I enjoy having a mix of I am or sometimes working on my weak stroke for my I am. So uh, a lot of the training just it differs between um, distance, freestyle and for I am training. Yeah. And so I uh, I've, I've talked to a few other top recruits, um, especially some good I amers. And, and they've told me about um, how they really enjoy that versatility as well being able to switch from one stroke to the other. Um, but I think, you know, they're, they're kind of talking about the 200 IM and I think 400 IM training is, is a whole different ball game. Um, mm-hmm. how would you describe, you know, what, what's, what's a 400 IM set that you love or, or what do you really like about that 400 IM training? Yeah. So a couple of my favorite 4 IM practices are ones that, um, I just started doing with Mike DeBoer at Lakeside and um 
it, it he likes to do work on the strokes of so fly back breasts um and then nailing the freestyle at the end so the freestyle is like the majority part of the set because in the 4 a.m you have to have that last hundred freestyle you cannot die at the end so having that uh having the majority of the set be freestyle helps you push the back half of um back half of like the race and then also like uh working on negative splitting the fly back and breast as well uh so so do you have a favorite set um i can't really think of one that comes to mind uh I, oh actually i did one the other day and it was so three times through and then um you did a hundred fly a 50 fly faster and then 225 fly sprint and then four 100s um the first three are all backstroke descend and then the last one is um uh 50 back 50 breast and then those that one is like as fast as you can go um working on your like back half of the backstroke and breaststroke splits and then your uh then we did four 100s brush uh the first three were breaststroke the descend the last one was uh 50 breast 50 freestyle as fast as you can go working on your 4 am splits and then two 100s freestyle um that were uh, 100 on 110 so like like fast interval uh short rest and then a hundred faster on um, two minutes, and then you get a hundred easy in between rounds. Whoa, you did that three <laughs> times. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, but that that's for me is really fun. Okay, and what do you what do you enjoy about a set like that? Um being able to work on like the descending part of the set but then also getting up and going fast and racing your teammates is super fun for me yeah so you mentioned you're at lakeside now uh, you just made that move you and your family as well about a year ago tell me about what went into the decision to make that move for you for your family and, and how it's been at lakeside so far yeah um, so about a year ago, right before Pan Ams happened, uh, my coach in, back in like where I used to live in Northern Kentucky, he decided to take a job so elsewhere. And, um, so we were trying to decide like what to do. And we reached out to Mike DeBoer at Lakeside. And um, with he built a history at Lakeside, there's a history of all fast swimmers. So we knew that um, that staying in Kentucky would be the best fit for us. And it's only like an hour drive back to Northern Kentucky. So we could still stay close to like our old uh, to our family members and every and everyone. So we knew that it was the best fit for us. Uh, we love our friends down here and ultimately it. I have a lot more um, training partners down here. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, certainly Lakeside is a storied club team, a storied program who's produced a lot of great athletes. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it seems like it's it would be a good fit. Um, and so uh, you mentioned Pan Ams last year. Let's, let's jump to that. Um, 2019, Oh, sorry, 2018 Nationals, the same meet you made um, Junior Pan Packs at. Was, was Pan Ams even on your radar as a meet you could qualify for? No. I had no idea that um, Pan Ams was a meet, actually. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and in Irvine, uh, it was right before 800 freestyle. Um, I, I didn't know anywhere. I, like I was pacing for the race and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm pacing really good right now. Like I'm hitting pace easily. I had no idea what I was about to go. My goal was to make Fiji but I never had like, never thought that I could make the national team. I never, like, it wasn't even a thought until after I saw, um, I touched the wall, I saw 828 on the clock and I was 
amazed because I think my goal was the, was to get like under 840 or something. So to see 828, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Uh, so, and I had put, I had wrote that down on a paper before, like as a crazy number, like maybe I could hit it. And I did. And I was so proud and so excited to see that number. And then, um, I was in like the day heat. So at that night I saw, um, the top heat swim and I saw that I got six and I was like, Oh my gosh, I made the national team. And then later I saw an article on swim swam about the um, Pan Am like pick picks for like the roster and everyone. And I saw that I, my name was on there. And so I like went to my coach and I was like, what is this? And he goes like, Oh, uh, you're, you're going to be on like the roster for Pan Am. So, and sure enough, I got the email like, the next week of um, saying that I was on the 2019 Pan American Games uh, roster for USA Swimming. Hold on a second. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. You found out from us that you're on the <laughs> Pan American team? Yes. Well, I didn't, I didn't find out. It was like a uh, trajectory, like roster. Like gotcha, this, gotcha. Is, who we, this okay. is who we think okay. is going to be on the Pan Am um, <laughs> roster. And so I was like, oh, I didn't know that that was a, like a thing until <laughs> I went to my coach later that night and asked him about it. And then I got the email for the Ross, like the official roster later. Okay. Gotcha. So yeah. that's, that's us doing our jobs. Every, everyone did their jobs, but that that's so cool that, that you were able to find out. And that wasn't even on your radar. Um, tell, you know, uh, the 2019 Pan American games seemed like the best meet to go to in 2019 the travel meet for the usa wise mostly because it was in lima peru uh which seemed like the coolest place to have a swim meet um you got to see there like they had there was llamas everywhere you got to see lots of swimmers pictures of machu picchu what was your experience like in lima at at those pan-american games um it was it was amazing uh to get to represent Team USA on a national team level uh, is an awesome experience. Having my name on my uh, on the cap was amazing. And then um, the first day, like walking into the pool, it was so like decked out. It was literally like one of the coolest pools that I have ever swam in. Uh, it was decorated all because it was a pan. It was because it was a games. It was even cooler because uh, everyone was wearing like the same Nike stuff. There were other athletes there, not just swimmers. So it was a really cool experience to get to, um, to get to not only swim on the national team level, but get to meet other national team um, from different uh, sports. Yeah. So you had been on a junior pan pack or you had been on a junior team and you mentioned how that was an amazing experience. What was it like being with, you know, on the national team with um, swimmers, your your own age, as well as, you know, swimmers in college, swimmers who hit, you know, in their thirties, who were, who were veterans and team captains. What was it like to be with that mix of athletes? It was super fun to be with, um, like five people that are closer to my age. So, uh, Alex Walsh, Isabel, Phoebe, and then, uh, Andrew. And, um, it, so we had that little, like young, younger group, like, um, uh, like fun, fun little group uh, of us five. And then, um also getting to see like people like naked nathan adrian uh it was just super cool like at first i was a little intimidated when i saw the roster i was like oh my gosh nathan adrian's on this roster but uh then i like put it into perspective i was like we're all competing on the same level and it was just super fun to have that balance of of a younger national team and then the older national team um were was the 800 at that meet well i guess before i get into that just for anyone who's never seen nathan adrian in person he's he's one of the nicest people i've ever met but he's also six foot eight and so you see nathan adrian you're like wow i'm competing with him and then you see him in person you're like wow he's big but then you talk to him 
and uh he's he's just he's such a sweetheart <laughs> that's that's um it is cool to to meet those people in your life who 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 you've looked up to for so long and then they become kind of more human to you as well and you really like you said you realize oh we're, we're on the same level we're, we're all just competing and representing usa uh, yes <laughs> Okay. So, so, sorry. So, um, so we're at that meet was the 800 prelims finals or was it timed finals? Um, it was timed finals. So I swim in at night. Okay. And, and tell me about that race. Um, you know, did you have, I, it was your only race at the meet. Did you have butterflies behind the blocks? What, what was, what was the lead up like to that race? I had a ton of butterflies behind the blocks. <laughs> um, it was my first, uh, like Nash. So it was my first competition where, um, I had to be in the ready room for 30 minutes before. Uh, so there was like a reporting time and you could not be late for that. So I was sitting there and it, it was a different atmosphere because I had never been used to that before. So you had time to sit there and just think about your race. And um, it like I immediately started having like, like race, like pre-race butterflies is how I call it. And, um, and finally, so when I was like walking over to the blocks, um, I was, I noticed like I was too nervous almost like, <laughs> Oh, why am I putting, I think I was putting way too much pressure on myself, uh, trying to like think I was thinking too much about the race beforehand. I shouldn't have been thinking about it that much. I should have, um, just like thought about it once mentally prepared and then raced. But as I was walking over, I was really nervous. My legs were like shaking and like numb. And, um, ultimately it wasn't my best swim at all. Um, I wasn't really happy with it because I was too much worried about, um, the people I was worried about the lanes outside of me, uh, rather than just thinking about like my own specific race strategy. I was in the other person's head, not my own. So, um, it was just a, honestly, Pan Am's was just a learning experience for me. I didn't swim as well as I wanted to. But um, now I know how to deal with that pre-race um, nerves uh, better than I did at Pan Am's. Yeah. I mean, was it relieving at all for you that you were able to go into that race and come out, you know, not having your best race, but still earning a silver medal? Yes. Yes. It was, um, it was honestly, I was so glad that I meddled and, um, not meddling at my first national team, uh, trip. It was, it was honestly like one of the best experiences and, um, and knowing that I still have a lot to offer. It's like super exciting going into trials next year. Yeah. So next uh, I mean, this coming year is a big year for you. It's your senior season right now. Uh, you've committed to swim for Indiana th this next fall. You've got Olympic trials this coming summer. Um, t tell me about what, what the next couple months are looking like for you and, and w what you're looking forward to so much in the coming year. Yeah. So, um, within the next couple of months, I get to race at us open, which I'm super excited about. I have not raced at all since before COVID. I think the last race that I had was at the Iowa Pro Series meet. Okay. So just uh, getting to, I mean, we have like a couple of practices where we like um, didn't suit up, but like got to race or did like a little inner squad type meet, mm -hmm. but um, definitely getting to race on a like bigger scale um, in Indy, hopefully at the US Open. I'm like super excited for that, but definitely for like the next couple of months, um, just working on really hard on training and, um, like getting just a really good, uh, groove in for. Yeah. Uh, so tell me about your last six, seven months, um, with COVID, were you out of the water for a long time? Were you guys able to get back in pretty quickly? Were you doing dry land and stuff outside of the pool? What was that like when that, you know, right after Des Moines, uh, when, when, when the shutdown started? 
Yeah. So it, um, like right when shutdown started, I was like at a loss for words. I have never like, cause no one has ever experienced anything like this before. So I was a little like anxious when I wasn't allowed to swim at all. But then I realized that I kept it in perspective that everyone is in this same position. So uh, for three months, all like I, I worked out doubles still like three times a week. I still, I still tried to keep to my swimming schedule, just doing different cardio instead of swimming. So, um, for a little while I was doing like Peloton workouts, um, and, uh, my group like Lakeside was hosting team Dryland, So I was doing those. And then, uh, I was really fortunate to have grandparents that had like a home gym in their basement. So I was able to just, like keep lifting and, um, and ultimately I used it to get in better shape than I was before COVID. And, um, uh, so I, like three months goes by of me just, um, doing Peloton workouts, um, and stuff like that. And pool started to open in like other States, but Kentucky still wasn't open yet. So I was like, well, some of my friends. So I reached out to Kenzie McMahon and, um, she ended up letting me come and train with her. So I flew down to Florida, uh, to train with her and she, her whole family was like a super blessing, uh, letting me stay with them and train with them for two weeks until, um, a pool in Kentucky was open. So I was able to jump right back into training and, um, get after it pretty fast. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, Kinsey, she's now a junior at Alabama. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so which is, that's super cool. You were able to train with her in Florida. What was that like? Uh, it was awesome. I have never, so I got to train with her before at the training center uh, for an open water camp actually. And we were like roommates. So we had already been like really good friends and then we had Israel as well. So, um, we were pretty close. So I reached out to her and then, uh, her family allowed me to stay with them. And, um, training was like, I jumped right into it right away. And, um, I was able to like keep up and I was, I felt great. And, um, I didn't feel like we had lost any time. Like I felt like I was just training right back. Uh, like if I was getting back from Iowa. So, um, I was hitting like pretty, pretty good times back in like the first week. And then I was able to come back, uh, to Louisville and, um, pick up right where I left off. Wow. Uh, that's yeah. that's awesome. Peloton really works, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, uh, to to wrap up our conversation, tell me where you're at today. You've you've been in the water for a while. Um, how are you feeling about the training you've put in and the, the training you're going to put in in the next couple of weeks? I am feeling really good about training. Um, now, uh, the last couple of weeks have been a little um, rough, more rough because one of the uh, pools, like the, the main pool that we were training at was outside. So, and it's getting cold and the heater broke. So we oh, were now no. no longer allowed to like, it, it's like 70 degrees, like it's freezing. Yeah, that's not and, good. Uh, because, and it's only like, I think it was like 68 yesterday outside. So um, not having that option has been really hard on us. Um, we, so I think usually we don't get a text until like 30 minutes before practice starts, if we're having it or not, but luckily I have another, um, another option, uh, to train at this like little club, um, called Blairwood on my own. If uh, practice ends up like getting canceled but in the morning uh we have i still got get to train with like the group in the morning and then a lot of us already have blairwood memberships so we're able to um train together as a group in the afternoons if we need to get a double in so um training but so even though it's not the most ideal situation we're still doing the best with what we have and i'm super excited to see um to get back into like a regular training schedule once the heater gets fixed yeah well mariah thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and talk with me for a while it, it was great getting to 
uh, hear your open water and pool swimming perspective. And uh, we'll have to bring you back on at some point to, to talk about um, what I'm sure will be further open water exploits. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.